Welcome back to Oak Haven. Uh, today we're going to work on a project that I'm pretty excited about. I've been excited about it for a few years. <laughs> haven't gotten a chance to do it. Uh, it's basically just honeysuckle removal, but it's an area we haven't removed before. And the reason we haven't removed it is because it's really not on our property. It's beyond our property on the neighbor's property. Any land manager needs to deal with the fact that there's property boundaries. You know, we can clear out all of the invasives in our property, but at some point you're going to hit a boundary line and your neighbors may not be as enthusiastic about removing all of their invasives as you are. So here we have a hedge of bush honeysuckle, emmer honeysuckle, uh, Lanicera macchiae, uh, and you can come through and you can pretty much see where our boundary line is because it, what you see over here are the carcasses of honeysuckle and uh, autumn olive and bittersweet. But right along the property line, you see that the autumn olive is healthy and producing berries. You've got um, bittersweet producing berries. You've got multiflora rose producing berries. And this is all just, you know, feet from where we've been working so hard to get rid of invasives. So you can scan our property line and you do not see a lot of invasives. There's still some there. We still have work to do. It's not perfect. But then you get to other people's property and it's just overrun with honeysuckle. You've got these big hedges of honeysuckle and other things. Now our videos that we post here, I've shared on local next door groups and I share it occasionally on Facebook and friends and family. Uh, so we've we've had communication with the neighbors. They're not necessarily sold on the idea that all of this honeysuckle is decreasing the diversity of the, the ecosystem and they're, real, they're losing sleep over that. They're not necessarily sold on the idea that you have the allopathic um, impact of this honeysuckle and it's, it's um, keeping uh, native plants from growing up and from germinating in the understory. What they are concerned about is the fact that when they mow their lawn, the honeysuckle grows out and it's hard for them to mow. It, it runs along their mower and them and they don't like it. So they trim it back and they end up with this hedge of honeysuckle, which is pretty common. You see it in, in uh, uh, suburban areas. Because honeysuckle, when you cut it back, it re-sprouts and it does. It forms a very dense hedge. They don't really want that hedge. So they've agreed that uh, we can cut out the honeysuckle along this border that's technically on their property but bordering our property. So for me, it reduces the seed load that's being dumped onto our property and opens it up. For them, it reduces their maintenance. You know, I see here in front of me, I've listed off some of the other things that are here. Here they've got a uh, burning bush, again, producing seeds. So uh, I would be thrilled to get rid of this so that this is not seeding off onto our property. So what I've discussed with them and what we're going to do here is just down at the end of the driveway here. We're going to start clearing up some of these areas that are on their property. And uh, I'll, I'll pull it down and try to make it look a little nicer. Uh, let them get a feel for what it will look like without these invasive species. And then assuming that they like that, uh, we'll go ahead and do the whole property line. Now, again, we have 60 acres with only maybe five or six um, neighbors. So we have large, property boundaries with people. So this property boundary goes quite a ways back. It will take a while for me to clear it up. But right now, it is just a, a, a hedge of honeysuckle that's maybe, for most of the boundary, is maybe 10 feet thick. And then it opens up into our woods, which are much more open and uh, uh, easy to walk through. So the tools that we're going to use for this project are familiar to anyone who's been uh, following any of our videos. Um, we're cutting down major shrubs, so we're going to actually use a chainsaw. We like this DeWalt uh, battery-operated chainsaw, um, mostly because I'm cutting, I'm stopping, I'm cutting, I'm stopping, I'm not cutting a lot. So I like that I can cut, I take my finger off the trigger, it's completely off, it's not, I'm not worried about bumping into it or anything like that. Um, we'll cut and we'll treat, and I can set this down on the ground. We lubricate the chainsaw. The bar chain oil is this motion lotion, which is a biodegradable chainsaw oil. Whenever you're cutting with a chainsaw, it's constantly throwing off uh, chain oil. I would rather not have that be a petroleum product, so we use a biodegradable product. In this case, it's motion lotion uh, from uh, Woodland. 
And then for treating, we treat with a glyphosate solution. This is a 20% glyphosate solution. We mix up from a 41% concentrate. Um, so it's about half and half, 41% concentrate and water. And then we add a, um, a dye to it so we can see what we've done and what we've treated. And uh, uh, we don't add a, an additional surfactant because <clears throat> we buy the, the concentrate that has a surfactant in it already. Um, we use our, our sprayer, which is not, we, I don't like spraying because it aerosols the, the, um, the active ingredient. So what we do is we use our modified sprayer and then paint the, uh, the, the cut stem with it. Again, um, most of you are familiar with that. If you've seen our videos, otherwise uh, see our video on how we make up the sprayer. Uh, it's, I think it's very effective in uh, keeping the, uh, the herbicide where it needs to be and not allowing it to spray out other places. So our modified um, sprayer which I clip on the back of my belt so that it's out of my way while I'm, I'm cutting. That allows me to bend over and cut. And the sprayer doesn't bend over with me. So I can cut, I can treat. We put a hook and a um, wire tie on there so it will hold, cut, 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 treat. It goes pretty well. Before I was dealing with that, I would have this falling in the way, and there are times when I would hit the chainsaw blade, and this would swing out in here, and it would hit the chainsaw blade, and if a chainsaw blade hits the, the tubing on a pressurized tank like this, it's pressurized, it just sprays all over the place. Not a very um, pleasant experience. I cut, I treat, and depressurize a little bit. Added more solution to the tank. Doesn't need a lot of pressure. Actually, it's almost better not to have a lot of pressure in the tank. Treat the cut stems and move on. Generally, on our property, I leave things as they lay. Um, this out of kind of a politeness to the neighbors. I'm going to take this and I'm actually going to drag the cut stems onto, back onto our property. Still have a lot more to do, but we've made a big dent in this uh, this transition area. Now most of the green leaves that you see don't have any trunk attached to them, so that's a good thing. Um, we'll let this die back and see what it looks like later on in the um, in the winter. So now then the goal, once we get this neighbor in line, is maybe working with the rest of the neighborhood to see if we can convince them to clear out some of their invasives. Obviously, this is something that uh, I'm not going to go into every neighborhood and clear out their invasives. So I need to teach them and get them on board with the idea that invasives are not a good thing for the neighborhood uh, so that they'll get out here and spend some time uh, clearing invasives themselves. So that's what we're working on. Um, Hopefully you're taking advantage of this time in the winter to, uh, to go ahead and clear out some invasives, particularly the honeysuckle and uh, burning bushes sitting out in the woods with bright red flags on it saying, here I am, help me get rid of me. Uh, calorie pear is, it has bright orange leaves as it's popping up all over the place. Uh, again, 
just letting you know this is where I am. Cut me at the base and treat me and uh, uh, let's get on with the, the native plant community. So I'm curious to hear what your experience has been. Have you been dealing with property owners? Have you had good experiences, bad experiences? Have you figured out a good way to educate the, uh, the other property owners so that they're on board with what you're doing? Have you been having um, fights with the property owners about uh, the fact that you're cutting down all the trees and cutting down everything that's green? Um, leave comments and let me know what's going on in your, uh, your situation. Thanks for joining us on this project. Um, hopefully it's useful to you. Uh, if you like it, hit the like button. Um, if you like what we're doing and you wanna hear more about managing woodlands, uh, we always appreciate new subscribers. Um, other than that, thanks for coming along.